Hi, my name's Helen, and you're watching Get to Know Me. I am here with the lovely Helen Denham. Helen Ashley. Um, so I'm excited to interview her and just to give you all a little background about Helen. Helen is a mentor for women. She's a certified behavioral behavioral change specialist, um, a QHHT facilitator, and you're going to have to tell me more about that because I don't know a lot about that, and a Reiki to healer. Her mission is to embolden her community to design the lives they truly desire through mindfulness, behavior change, quantum healing, and subconscious reprogramming. Um, also, she is an amazing musician. I've seen her perform a couple of times, and she's awesome. Um, and I'm so happy to have her here today with me. Yay. Thank you, Ashley. For people listening, Ashley and I have known each other for like 10 years, I feel like. So I love when we get to like pop in and just reconnect and see where we are on our journeys because it changes so much. Yes. We've known each other for so long. Um, what, I feel like you just moved to New York City. Did you just move to New York City when I met you? Um, yeah, probably. Well, I had gone to college there and then I was out kind of getting my first jobs around New York city. We were working in the meatpacking district together. So I had already been there for a few years, but like not fully, like that was my first year in the nitty gritty of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We both worked at the standard and Helen was, um, modeling at the time. Oh my God. That's right. Oh my God. Just trying everything. <laughs> and doing all that good stuff. So now she's doing even, even better stuff. Um, so let's get right into the questions. And I have a few stuff that I'm interested to learn about. Um, so tell us about what you do and how it's uh, beneficial to your clients, um, your training that you have specifically QHHT facilitating and Reiki healing. Sure. Yeah. So my primary focus right now is running a mentorship series, which is two months long. I meet with clients once a week and it's either focusing on business acceleration for people that are interested in the wellness world and launching a really soul led business, but need help focusing in on that. Or it's really focusing on spiritual growth and deep subconscious healing where, uh, which is where I bring in more of the energy work like QHHT, like Reiki. Um, and those are trainings that I did to really gain a deeper understanding of the ethereal realms and how, and get a deeper understanding of ourselves as spiritual beings, having a physical experience, right. And really kind of understand tangibly what's going on there, how we can access those subtle realms and how we can use that knowledge and that wisdom to start to change our lives and to integrate ultimately more happiness into our lives. So um, depending on where someone is on their journey, I'll bring in, you know, guided hypno journeys for my clients in our mentorship series, but also I'll do like one off like three hour sessions while we're do uh, a real deep dive. And that will include oftentimes I'll take them through basically an hour in the beginning of a life review, which might seem really simple and kind of like, oh, why would you do that? But when someone can review their life and speak it um, from like their earliest memory to present day, all of these things will come to the surface that like you might not even realize would come up or had an impact on you. And you'll start to understand where you picked up beliefs. Um, what has really been sticky in your system that we can start to move around. And then we'll get into the more, you know, deeper subconscious realms where I take you down into a hypno journey. And that can often feel like a really deep visualization meditation. And ultimately the goal is to get even deeper than that so that the ego and the self kind of moves out of the way. And we can start to access um, the ancestral realms, the spirit realms, past lives. Um, so it's really similar to a past life regression. And then you can even get to another layer beyond that, which is really my, my dream to, to work on with a client. Whatever comes up for a client is what's most necessary for them. How, how deep they are willing to go and kind of get out of the way for the process is going to be perfect for them um, to, to really accelerate their healing. But I always meet people where they are, right? But ultimately, if you can really get down where kind of quantum healing can take place and spontaneous healing can take place. Like Joe Dispenza talks about Dolores Cannon really refers to, and she's who I studied with to do this, her online program. Um, you allow space for 
spirit to come in and they kind of refer to themselves as a team, a group of spirits that kind of come in and can work on your body and start to move around stagnant emotions or energies that build up in the body like disease. And I really believe that disease forms because of unexpressed emotion um, and repressed memories or emotions. So what we're doing in the, this quantum space is creating a safe space to explore those emotions and allow your mind to kind of move out of the way. So we can start to take a look at your soul blueprint, basically what is going on with your soul's journey beyond the time and space dimension um, and start to work with that. So for example, when I've done it, I've done it with a couple other practitioners and it's really felt like a past life regression, but I've had very different experiences with each. I have never gotten to that deeper realm where, you know, a, a group of beings kind of comes in and works on me. And I hope I get there someday. But I just want to be totally transparent about that. Um, which is why it's so exciting to do this work. Cause there's always more to explore more to unravel, which is just the beauty of life in general. But when I did it with my, um, first practitioner, I literally went through like three or four different lifetimes. I was like an alien in like this orb and egg, like looking down into earth and understanding that we were collecting knowledge as a group of beings to take back to our collective. Um, I had a vision of being in this like fairy world. So it got very mystical and kind of fantastical, which is really interesting. And then with Leo, my most recent time, I entered this journey as um uh, an Indian woman wearing these traditional saris and beautiful colors. And I was in this um, castle in a tea room, laying out tea for my family and the family was coming in. And my uncovering in that session with Leo was that everything I'm doing in this lifetime now is an act of devotion to God, to source, to the universe. Everything I'm doing through my work with women and mentorship is an act of devotion um, to our highest expression of love. So it really, that was a huge emotional shift for me and really rooted me into my purpose um, in my business, to be honest, because now everything I do, whenever I bring in a new client, whenever I have a conversation like this, in the back of my mind and my spirit and myself is this is about devotion to love, basically. So um, that's why bringing in these quantum healing tools and these experiences, it's not just fluff. It has deep implications into how we show up in the world. So that's a lot to say on that topic, but it's all, it's all about working with energy, understand our understanding ourselves as souls and spirits and how that's going to, you know, come into our life path in this lifetime, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it definitely um, makes sense. And for people that don't know, could you explain just a little bit of what a past life regression is? Yeah, totally. So when we think about time and space, like, let's just start to reframe this a little bit, because time is a quote unquote, man-made human made construct to help us be at the same place together at the same time. Basically, it's an organizational tool that we've developed um, but it's, it's a construct. It doesn't actually totally exist. It's a way of tracking, you know, the cycles of the sun and the planets. And we understand time because our bodies get weathered by the elements living on earth. So we get wrinkles because we've been exposed to wind for so long and sun for so long. So, um, time is real in that aspect, but if we can pull back from, from that, like, I always like to imagine living on a different planet, for example, where the days are a completely different kind of cycle, um, and oxygen's different gravitational pull and push is different. Um, and we might live like 200 years there because our body doesn't get so worn down. So think about all these different layers and levels in which time and space kind of exist. And then once you can kind of flex that imagination, the walls of the time and space construct can kind of like drop away. And that's where we can start to explore past lives. So now when I think about time, I don't think about it linear. I think about it like stacked on top of each other. Um, and we can access these different points um, in this kind of stacking. So it's not necessarily like past or future or anything. It's like kind of all existing at once. It's much more like holistic, like a circle. I like to think of it. And we can tap into these different realms. Um, that's how I like to think of it. And there's all these theories about like uh, multiverses and having many different versions of self that we can tap into. Sometimes I think that's what is happening with deja vu is like this current self is making a decision in this direction and we can feel that change happen or something. So um, it's an interesting thing to explore. So when we're accessing past lives, I don't even necessarily think about it 
um, in time. I don't necessarily think, okay, this is me 2000 years ago. I think about it like as another dimension of reality that I have tapped into or experienced. Um, because when I think about source and God and energy, um, it's omnipresent. It's everything happening all at once. Um, and these are different like movies that we can start to exist in, you know? So I think, and this is what people explain when they have like near death experiences. I, this is one of my first lead-ins to spirituality was studying near death experiences and, um, astral travel and the dream world, because everybody was like explaining the same thing. I said, when I passed for that, for that moment in time, time fell away and everything existed all at once. I saw myself as a child to an old woman or like, you know, everything I've ever been was shown to me all at once. So that just kind of had this just resonant feeling like, okay, our spirits are infinite, eternal existence, having this experience on purpose intentionally in this dimension for a particular reason, I think like a pressure cooker to learn some really valuable lessons. And uh, there's kind of a lot of, a, a lot of talk in the spiritual world about how there's kind of a line that is really long to get into a body on planet earth, because it's the fastest acceleration for growth on this planet. Um, we just learn so much. It's painful to be alive a lot of the time. Um, but I choose to look at that pain uh, as very intentional. Like, okay, we're we're getting shaped here really fast, maybe faster than anywhere else. So those are my theories. And it's fun to explore. <laughs> uh, no, I definitely agree with you. And I uh, find it interesting because I notice on social media, a lot of people look at past lives as very linear. And I also believe that it happens all at once, but you can, it's like an ebb and flow. And if you know how to do astral projection or you have lucid dreaming, um, it's easier for you to comprehend that it can happen all at once because you're, you happen to be right there all of a sudden in that other reality. So if it's in the past, then how are you experiencing it now? And so I, I completely agree with you. And I think that's so interesting. And I remember um, you let me borrow a book about near death experiences. And I think I gave the book back to you. And then I ordered, I ordered it because I never finished it. And I, I don't think I finished it, but it was, it was really good. And it did talk about the things that you um, touched upon, which I think is like super cool. Oh, I love that. <laughs> of course, we exchanged that book. I love that. <laughs> Totally. I love what you're saying too, about the dream world being uh, a representation, kind of an end to that world. I totally yeah. agree. For a lot of people that do want to delve more into like astral projection or past life regression, they, they can start small with the dream world um, as like the gateway. They don't have to go in that route, but that is an option. And I think that's very cool. Um, I do have a question for you about what you said with past life regressions in your experience. So just to clarify, are you having those experiences where you were me you were you said you were an alien? Mm -hmm. an, are you actually experiencing that like astral projection or is it more of like um, your mind is just taking you to that moment in your head? For me, it felt like my mind was taking me to that moment in my mind, but um, it was more like of a conscious activation than that. It felt like a lucid dream, you know, when you're, when you're in a dream and you your senses are activated, like you can feel the temperature in the space. You're like, you're there. Um, so it felt like, I think it, it can take a little practice because I was in my head a little bit too much in that first time, the alien one where I first did that I was like, am I making this up? Am I just like projecting this? Cause I want to experience this. So I had a little bit of a block there, which is why it's, it's work. You, you know, it's a practice to keep getting into these realms. You can kind of get out of the way and have a more, um, deep experience and a more authentic experience perhaps. So when I was kind of experiencing the alien, it was like my imagination was really heightened and tuned in. And perhaps that's something that I really wanted to experience and tap into. But I do feel like I got this insight that um, was coming from maybe an outside source or something that was giving me an insight there. Um, because the other journey that I had in that one, I had like four different ones. 
was um, as a man in like medieval times, like kind of a heavy set man. I was looking down at my feet. It was raining and I was looking into this like castle in the distance. It was like a total medieval, you know, circumstance. So my mind was taking me to the most appropriate spaces. Um, I think it was an imaginative projection, but necessary. And it needed to, sh- something was being shown to me on purpose, very intentionally. Um, yes. Then with the other ones, when I did it for the second time, I was able to get out of the way even more. And that's where I had this kind of, um, this deeper exploration that really moved me emotionally and in a huge way in just my general life. And I, I feel confident that as I keep doing them, I'll get deeper and deeper. Yeah. I, I love that. I think that's wonderful. Um, and I think it's really important that we kind of experience different aspects of us, ourselves. I feel like we're so focused in the physical reality. We don't kind of like expand and unhinge our imagination a little bit to kind of delve deep into other aspects of our being. So I think that's, that's awesome. And um, with your one-on-one classes, when women book you for their one-on-one classes do they usually um able to accomplish what they want in one session or do you recommend that they do multiple sessions i for my mentorship it i i have a two-month program because there's so much to unpack like we bring in confidence work we do goal setting together we get really laser focused we put in action steps for that we get in you know rituals and um kind of tools rooted in shamanism so that takes eight sessions to really see, you know, a shift, which I've found because I've, after working with so many women, I'm like, okay, we've got a formula here. This is what helps people to really start to change and to, to see a shift. And in two months, that might seem like a long time, but when you look back on it and where you start, it's like, feels like a quantum leap sometimes. Um, So oftentimes when women will come into the mentorship, I'll ask them, you know, what does an ideal day in your life look like in your wildest dreams? What does that look like? And they'll say things to me like that they've never said before. Like, you know what? I actually really want to be an artist and make pottery for my full-time job, but I'm a graphic designer right now. How the heck am I supposed to do that? It sounds crazy. And they'll be like embarrassed to say it. And I'll be like, it's not crazy. Let's make a plan. And then at the end of the eight weeks, they've launched a pottery business. So it's like, it's a lot of confidence work and really understanding that we are capable of achieving what we want. Um, and that, that is like foundational healing that we're doing around what you believe you're worthy of. And then we can start to layer in the action because if somebody comes in and they're just like, okay, I want to build a business, but I don't think I'm worthy of it. It's like, we can't just give you action steps in the first session. We've got to start with the subconscious work first so that you actually can open up the space to receive it and feel worthy and willing to show up and be seen and to be witnessed in this space. Um, So When I do my like one-off sessions, my three hour uh, intensives with people, that's for business, for people that are really like, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm ready for my action items. We get it done. Um, And that's just kind of like a booster for them. Like if they're feeling confused, if they're feeling like they really need help focusing in, if they need some help with that confidence work, a lot can get accomplished in those three hours. But that's for a person who's like really ready to go for it and kind of knows where they're going. And then the other option for the intensive is the subconscious deep dive in the journey where I'll take you through basically a past life regression and bring in those QHHT tools. So that absolutely a huge shift happens in those. So definitely. Yeah. So um, how has your life changed since I, I call it you changing careers um, and moving to Topanga, going across country and now moving back to Maine? Yeah. Well, I, um, I'm just thinking about kind of how the shifts have happened when I was in New York, when I was, you know, when I was with you, when I was living there, I lived there for eight years and I was heavily pursuing entertainment, music, modeling, everything I could try my hand at. And I got to a point where I I could really see it starting to happen. I was going to Warner music and having meetings with A&R is there. I was, I had an event sponsored by Rolling Stone. I was feeling really like high on it. I was like, okay, this can start to happen. Um, however, behind the scenes of that, to be an artist, it's like owning your own business. You really need to be like obsessed with it. You need to love it so much that you like live and breathe music, um, or for modeling, like living and breathing fashion and beauty and like that kind of lifestyle. And I just found that it was like pulling teeth to rehearse every night. Didn't love it. I felt like drained. The lifestyle was a lot of late nights. It was getting ready to perform 
on every few weeks or every month. And the anxiety building up to that performance was a lot, you know, having to get an audience to show up was really strenuous. So, um, I was like, okay, if I'm going to take this to the next level, I need to really be okay with this being a lifestyle. And like, here, there are two options here. Either I'm kind of successful. Maybe I make a little money, but like, I'm looking at all my friends and I'm like the people who are so talented, my friends that have millions of downloads on their songs are like not making any money. There's like, there's no money being made here. And I was like, I'm not sure I want to sacrifice that. First of all, I'm like not obsessed with this. Um, I like the glamour of it. I like getting dressed up. I like performing. I love, you know, being able to say that I'm an artist and musician, but like when I really took a deep look at that, I was like, what am I doing in my free time out of passion? And I was reading all these like self-mastery books. I was really starting to dive into the spiritual world. I started my podcast and that's what I was really obsessed with. Um, I was really deep into meditation. I'd taken a solo trip to Thailand. I was like, that's what I'm obsessed with. So I think the shift was having some radical honesty to come in and be like, do you really want to do this? Um, do you really want to get even signed to a label and then live a life as like a pop star? That's the big dream. Right. And I was like, actually, no, I'm a cancer. I love to be in like my blanket and my cozies. I want to be teaching like from home. I want to travel whenever I want to travel. I don't want any restrictions on my life. So that is what led me to go to Topanga and to California to start to get into a community of uh, wellness people, like-minded individuals around holistic healing, spirituality. Cause I was like, if I really want to start to accelerate this path, I need to be brave enough and like, know that I'm still worthy of success and everything I want. If I decide to let go of that trajectory, that's good. I didn't fail. It's okay. Um, but I can, it's okay to let it go. Um, and and then I just kind of found my people in Topanga and really was able to kind of start my mentorship business about a year and a half ago, launched my first confidence course, launched my mentorship program. And I remember I launched it and it took like three months to even get a bite and because I was still doing a lot of confidence work. I was still like, am I worthy of doing this? Do I have the skills? I was getting certified for a while and like lots of different things. Finally, when my deep sense of worthiness and, um, passion started to come to the surface. I was really like, okay, let's go. And then all the clients started to come in. So it really, I just want to reiterate that that self-worth work is the foundation to everything. And yeah. then from there, I ended up moving back to Portland because I'm so close with my family and being in California so far away from them. I was like, it's just not a sustainable for me. My heart hurts when I'm this far away from them. So it was like, either I go back to New York city, but my nervous system had been shot living in New York city. So I was like, let me just go to Portland because my plan is to travel a lot. So I'm kind of in this incubation phase where I'm like head down for business right now, getting really honed in, going through a growth spurt right now. And then ideally 2023 will be a year of travel. So this would be my landing pad and then I'll be in different environments, but that's kind of why I'm here now that this is my landing pad. I feel close to family. I'm access accessing New York. Like I want to access it, but, um, hopefully that answers the question. That's kind of like the, the oh, cyclical nature of what happened. <laughs> uh, no, it answers the question perfectly. And I feel like, uh, working in the entertainment industry, it's also like when I saw you performed, it was like, so when I saw Helen perform, she was like the main performer like it was her showcase and so she had other people perform before her and you can immediately tell the difference but no offense to everyone else they were awesome by the way but like they were performing and then Helen was performing so you can definitely see that star quality and I wonder um at least for me like when I work on artistic projects you have to work with other people and I also feel like it could be very hard on you to work with people who don't have the same worth work ethic as you or they're not into it as much as you it's frustrating at least for me that's part of the frustration of coordinating with other people and you're like is it even worth it so mm -hmm. um understand what you mean mm -hmm. um yeah what kind of relationships in your life do you seek now as opposed to before um you started your healing journey. I think that is such a great point that you make, Ashley, just like surrounding yourself with the right people. And I, I, it's part of my cancerian quality, like little snappy crab. Sometimes I can be a little bit cutthroat with it. Like 
I have, and I've actually learned to soften a little bit more around that because if someone is not bringing optimism and happiness and motivation into my life, I'm very quick to be like, I don't want you in my energy realm right now. So I will, I will go into isolation before I allow someone to come in and bring energy. And I feel the same way about romantic partnerships. Um, you know, if someone's going to enter my life, it really needs to be, um, accentuating the joy and the growth. So, um, it's kind of like cutting the fat off of the meat. That's that's such a gross (laughs) analogy, but I'm like, I don't have time for it anymore. I don't have time for people who are uh, unmotivated or pessimistic. Mostly. Um, I want to surround myself with people who are uh, intentionally prioritizing their joy and their well being. That doesn't mean that everybody in my realm was like, entrepreneur hustle go not at all it's just people that are prioritizing their their well-being and their happiness um i learned you know a while ago to really let go of people who were just bringing a lot of negativity in so uh, sometimes i will find that like i'm a little bit more in an isolated room um until i'm ready to access the next space but that's why mentorship has been so powerful um, for me to hire my own mentors. Cause I'm like, what rooms do I want to be in? Who do I want to be surrounding myself by? That's why I choose podcast guests uh, really intentionally. I'm like, these are the kind of people that I want to be um, in conversation with. So I'll kind of handpick those people for like, who am I expanded by? And then I'll hire the people that I want to emulate. I'll hire them. And then I'll kind of get into the same room as them. And um, yeah, you know, I think you can find people by just following your curiosities, your hobbies, like going for me, it's like eventually going to the rock gym. I know I'm going to find people there who like the outdoors. They like nature, they like fitness, um, which I want to be better at anyway. So I'm like trying to get myself into the rooms where people are like a step ahead of me. You know, that saying like, never be the smartest one in the room. I want to feel like that. So I don't want to feel like I'm pulling people with me the whole time. I want to feel like I'm in a room where I'm expanded. Um, and then my work is to kind of help people get into their next room, basically. Like my ideal client is the the version of me like a year ago. So um, not to say that they're, it's not about people not being like necessarily good enough. It's it's not that at all. It's like, who are you motivated by? And then you can turn your business into helping the people who are like a step, step behind business wise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if that I, makes sense. I agree. Um, and I also noticed that leaders kind of have they, at least for me, I consider myself a leader. Like I want somebody as my equal or somebody that I look up to, but I noticed that a lot of people that gravitate to people with positive light and are leaders are people that need help and they love your energy. Um, and I think that it's a beautiful thing, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I, well, I want somebody that I could look up to, or that we are like on the same page. So I, I completely understand. And I think that's, that's great. Um, and I have a final question for you. Where do you see yourself um, three years from now? Oh, oh yeah. I love this. I love a little uh, future projection. Little I first. see myself um, having complete like time, financial location freedom. I see myself really traveling the world, making a lot of money and teaching women how to make a lot of money too. Cause I really feel like financial freedom has taught, given me such a a sense of safety. And, um, I find that business has been a spiritual experience to build business. So I just find myself gravitating more toward business development and marrying spirituality and business together. So I think that is so empowering for women and, Um, I think we are shedding this kind of paradigm of the patriarchy, thinking that we all need to be working nine to five jobs. We need to be doing this, this, and this. And I, my, my hope and my wish is to break that glass ceiling for all of us and, and be an example of that. And so that's why I have, I have like career goals for the next three years. I'm like head down, like my thirties are going to be like, um, financial, spiritual growth and the marriage between that and just building a really happy life, um, I think I'm getting ready to call in a relationship soon. I think I've been moving around a lot. And honestly, part of moving to Portland was like, all right, if I'm really going to call in a relationship, I can't be, I need an anchor a little bit. So I I bet that I'll be in a relationship someday soon. And um, yeah, probably doing more public speaking and doing that a lot more. Um, So actually like doing wellness events, speaking more and um, 
and probably making more music too. So music has become just a beautiful, like passion project for me. And I'll continue to put that out. But I'm like, when I look back on the last year, I have had my head down really focused and I've seen really great growth there. So I just want to keep that momentum going for the next couple of years and just stay focused. I know that that's kind of maybe a superficial answer, but like, I'm like so focused right now. I just, you know, freedom. Yeah. And it's an honest answer. And I just got, I had an image um, that came into my mind as soon as we started the interview that I see a, a book in your future. Oh, I, <laughs> I love that you said, I actually have a plan for a book. Um, my sister is like my favorite photographer and she like, she thinks I'm so silly for saying that, but she has such a beautiful eye for photography and I love to write poetry. And so I have this vision of a coffee table book with her photos and my poetry. Um, I've started, I've started to write like a book about confidence and started to write that out, but it just doesn't feel right. I don't think it's, it's like a life's work that's coming together. I don't think I'm really going to be ready to write a, a book like that for another five to 10 years, but I would love to have like a coffee table book or something, you know, just juicy to keep on your nightstand or something. So yeah. thank you for saying that, Ashley. I love that idea. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I love you so much. Whenever I see Helen, I always feel so comfortable and at ease. I saw her um, this year in Topanga, actually. And it felt like it felt like time passed because I was excited to see her. But it also felt like no time passed, which I thought was was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, Just so everyone knows, Helen has a podcast called Lift It. You can check it out on iTunes and Spotify. Um, You can also check out her amazing music on iTunes and Spotify as well. Um, I'll put the link in bio of her website, but it's helendenham.com if anybody wants to book a session with her or do any kind of work with her. Um, And what else? Yeah. What's your Instagram? That is it. Uh, my Instagram is at Helen Denham underscore. I love you. Thank you so much for, for having me. I just love your energy. And I'm so inspired by you as an artist and a creative as well. And I see just major things for you as well. And just keep going. You're just amazing. Thank you for facilitating this conversation and for the other ones that you've done too. I just love it. Oh, thank you. And I'm, I'm happy that you joined and that you had the time. Um, and you go could you just look at the camera and say hi my name is Helen and you are watching uh get to know me yes perfect was that good okay great thank you Ashley I'll talk to you soon great bye love (laughs) bye